Roundtable right here at WGBB 1240 AM. Our telephone number is 631-888-8811. Our web address is www.am1240wgbb.com. As we move now into the second half of our program this evening, I am very delighted to share with you uh, Minister Anthony Davis, mm -hmm. and uh, he is a member of our ministerial staff, mm -hmm. the Hollywood Full Gospel Baptist Cathedral. He's brought a great deal of enthusiasm, passion, and excitement to our ministry. He has, he has widened and expanded an existing ministry and taken it to, to new levels. All right. And All right. um, we're anxious to talk with you tonight, and thank you so very much, uh, Brother Davis, for being here. Well, thank you for inviting me, and uh, I'll say it's definitely a pleasure, and I'm blessed to be here. And I'm just waiting for Oprah next, because I'm <laughs> to the bishop's table. <laughs> <laughs> we like that. We like that. <laughs> uh, Brother um, Davis, you have come to us from California. Yes. Uh, you are an actor in Los Angeles and Hollywood. You're a major part of the entertainment industry there. And uh, as you have come to us uh, from that world, just kind of share with our audience briefly uh, what kind of experiences you had in the field of entertainment? Well, uh, basically I've been uh, kind of, I grew up in New York, actually, in the Bronx, uh, South Bronx, and we moved to California, and I spent about five, six years there. Mm -hmm. And I've pretty much done everything from commercials to film to uh, TV, and I've worked with names, no names, myself, <laughs> paid for free, uh, got paid, still waiting on the check, you know, everything. But um, basically, uh, one of the biggest things that I've learned is that you think that uh, because a person has, has uh, obtained a certain status or, or something uh, in the field of entertainment, that they have it going on. Mm -hmm. And the biggest concept that would may amaze a lot of people is that some really don't. Yeah. And it is so dark uh, in their, their lives and their situation that so many different things go on that you would think would never even affect them. And we're talking about people who have uh, a good you know, number of zeros in their bank account, <laughs> who can go pretty much where they want to go, who, who have homes that they can choose which home am I going to stay in. Mm -hmm. And if you would just look into their life, you would be thoroughly amazed. Right. Listen, I, I want to ask one additional question, and then I want to yield to Bishop Green to uh, say good evening to you and, and raise a question. Uh, but you're in charge of our drama ministry at the church, and uh, we have taken the position... <laughs> We have taken the position that uh, there are multiple ways to convey the good news and the gospel into the lives of the believer. Uh, there is this other term, gospel taming, that has been made popular by uh, Tyler Perry and his religious-based plays. Uh, talk to us about how you see drama working hand-in-hand -hand with ministry to be really, really effective in conveying the gospel. Well, basically, I, I think that uh, there's no level of persuasion that can change a person's reaction to what they've experienced. So basically, uh, when we uh, change the images that, uh, that is shown to them, we can help change what they know. And using drama um, as a tool to teach is, is pretty similar to what Jesus did. He, you know, he taught in parable, and he spoke of stories, and he kind of painted a picture, if you would, using words. So now in this day of age, you know, we're painting uh, pictures with action mm -hmm. and words. And be it, be it film or on a uh, stage or TV or what have you, it, it's, it's showing a, a specific um, instruction or a, a specific uh, thing that you're trying to get across, and you're able to adapt it by using your senses. Okay. Davis, Minister Davis, one of the recent projects that you have done at our church is to produce a brand new commercial that we now use uh, on the BET channel mm -hmm. uh, to advertise and promote and advance our ministry. What what went into your thinking? You produced it, you directed it, um, you, it, it was your concept. What were you trying to accomplish? Who were you trying to appeal to? Those in the church, those outside the church, what elements did you use to attract the audience that you've attracted with that commercial? Uh, first off, I, I used uh, the music uh, to kind of, as a lure, if you will, and then I used um, technology that we have right now with the computer, and as far as moving different elements and changing scenes and going different variations, 
And at the same time, I'm limited because you only have a certain amount of seconds that you can use uh, for uh, the commercial. So I just try to encompass uh, someone being able to see themselves or shades of themselves in the commercial and it being fun. You see the, the kids there and they have a dance ministry. You'll see the choir there and it seems like, no, there's smiles on their face. It's not always holy, 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 Lord, and we go and we're throwing the water on each other and, you know, <laughs> going home. You know, I, I try to show that, you know, church can be fun, it can be inviting, and you can do the same things that uh, you do out there in the world, sort of, well, with respect, <laughs> but you can still have fun and learn and come and, and be able to sit with your fellow man and break bread and, and, and talk about subjects and, and just, you know, just live and have fun. I was at the church um, just about a week ago, and I was strolling through the sanctuary. You, members of the uh, drama ministry, were there. And uh, I happened to hear, I wasn't eavesdropping, but I happened to hear and see <laughs> that uh, you were making some early preparations for a production entitled Amen Corner. Yes. Now, Amen Corner was produced by James Baldwin, major sure. member of the Harlem Renaissance. He had his own issues. Uh, his own challenges. Some would say that he was not a conventional member of the church. Others would argue that he perhaps wasn't even a member of the church because of his lifestyle, because of his orientation. However, there is a profound message in his material. How do you reconcile using someone who some would say is as controversial as a James Baldwin and using that in the context of church and ministry? Well, I think one of the, the good reasons is that we're speaking about him now, and you know, and he's written from the perspective of his eyes from growing up in church and seeing different uh, things and, and how some things may have seemed unfair in his eyes, or how people are being treated or what have you. And to me, it's it's almost like a Marvin Gaye song. If you listen to Marvin Gaye, the the items and the different things that he talked about are still in existence today. And I think it's important to encompass uh, everything. So you have your good, you have your bad, you have your ugly. But I think if we open up the window to everyone's life, we all could be going to hell <laughs> just for different reasons. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you may not be on my line, but you're going to be on the line. <laughs> and we'll be ending up in the same yeah. place. <laughs>